Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, is it worth it to buy Jumpstart? The newest Magic the Gathering booster product, Jumpstart was originally conceived as a fun way to help new players jumpstart their Magic the Gathering experience, but soon became much more. With high-end reprints, exciting brand new cards for Commander and Legacy, and a fun, innovative way to play, Jumpstart is catching the eye of new and experienced players alike. But as this brand new product originally aimed at brand new players, the smash up it is supposed to be, or just another dirtle fest with numerous quality control errors and limited availability jacking up prices. Let's take a look. Jumpstart is a product designed to be played off the shelf. Within each booster is a set of themed cards. The themes vary with some rarer than others, and you might open lands or rainbow or lightning. Within each theme, there is a slight variation from pack to pack, but with enough of the cards remaining the same within each theme. For example, if you open the Above the Clouds theme booster, you'll have a chance at four different configurations. You may open the exciting new Inez, the Gale Force, or even a reprint of Cura Great Glass Spinner. The way to play with Jumpstart is simple. Each player takes two booster packs of Jumpstart at random, opens them, sleeves them, and then shuffles them together to form a deck. You don't even need to worry about having lands, as the packs come with enough lands to play with. Honestly, it's great that you don't need anything other than two booster packs in order to shuffle up and play. With a smash together and out of the box aspect to Jumpstart, the gameplay is a lot like Smash Up a game I both love and have made a video on here. If you're familiar with Smash Up, then yes, Jumpstart is a lot like an MTG version of the game, which ironically was made by a former Magic the Gathering designer. If you're not familiar with Smash Up, well then I'll be happy to teach you how to play in less than 15 minutes if you check out that video there. Now I'll cover financial value in just a moment, but first I want to talk about something even more important than whether or not the packs have the best bang for your buck. Yes, there is something more important than reprints, and that thing is the game itself. This is a game. Is it fun? Is it accessible to play? Well, the answer is yeah. Very much so. Jumpstart is actually replacing lackluster products like the Game Night box set and other sad attempts at creating a watered-down, slow, and non-thought-intensive way to play Magic the Gathering for new players. If you have watched my reviews on these previous products, you'll know that I absolutely loathe them. They underestimate the capability of new players and provide a weak Magic experience. Instead of celebrating what makes Magic gameplay great, Great, I always felt these products shied away from it, and they were full of absolute jank too. But I'm, I'm not talking finance yet. With Jumpstart, I believe Wizards of the Coast has finally cracked the code. Being able to grab two booster packs and shuffle up and play accomplishes so much. Each game is different because there's so many different combinations of decks. And though this may not be on the level of a modern tournament in terms of intense, complex gameplay, there's still a lot of fun and strategy to be found here for experienced players such as myself. And unlike Game Night, I love how Jumpstart can indeed be enjoyed by everyone, from experienced to brand new player alike, and everyone in between. I absolutely got a thrill getting games of Jumpstart with my enfranchised friends, but I also was able to sit down with a few people who were just learning the game and get some fun games of Jumpstart in with them as well. The fact that these contain desired cards, both brand new and reprinted, is a neat element that added to our chatter, where my newer player friends got excited learning about why certain cards were powerful, where they were played, and they said it felt cool to walk away knowing they had a few rares and mythics that were good and in demand. Me, I was just happy to crack open that reprint of Oracle of Moldiah. There's something for everyone. And that's all I've ever really wanted. It's fun gameplay, and when you're done, the leftover cards aren't just destined for the draft chaff bin. New players can start trade folders, experience can crack reprints that they've been after for a long time, and 
Everyone loves Tiny Bones. What's more, Jumpstart can easily be modified to be replayable indefinitely with no expiration date. Buy a booster box, open each pack, sleeve your cards, and then place them in some form of resealable pack, whether it's something as simple as an envelope or as spiffy as a Cubamajig's pack. You can now play Jumpstart with your friends forever, again and again. Just break down your deck back into two packs when finished. You can label the decks or keep them a mystery or go back and forth to keep it interesting. Now you can get games easily with just one friend or a small group visiting for a party, uh, that is, that may visit for a party in about five to 10 years when the pandemic is over, but y you get the idea. Now, it's true that after playing and learning the decks and their strengths and weaknesses, a player can indeed determine which combinations and strategies are stronger than others, but that's Magic the Gathering. Learning a set's limited environment and becoming an expert drafter is just a much, much more advanced version of this. Jumpstart is a learning tool. It's great for new and returning players, but experienced players can play and enjoy immensely as well. And what everyone is playing, new and old alike, is Magic the Gathering. I think Jumpstart is really that Magic the Gathering board game we've been wanting. I have criticized in the past Past that Smash Up and other board games are a one-time reasonable fee for a game that you can play again and again endlessly, and that it's hard for Magic the Gathering to compete with that kind of value. Well, now they can. One booster box, and you have a game for life. It's incredible. And while gameplay is subjective, I found it to be fun and deep. I want to crack these right now and play with them first, and then see what valuable cards I got in each pack. Gameplay first, finance second, but that is not to diminish the value that can be found inside. Which brings us to financial value, part one. Jumpstart Pack Distribution and Odds. In Jumpstart, each booster pack has a theme. However, different booster packs with the same theme might still have different cards within. So just because you open an enchantments pack does not mean it will have the same contents as another enchantments pack. As one might be enchantment configuration style one, while the other might be enchantment configuration style two or three, etc. In total, there are 121 unique pack configurations in Jumpstart. Why does that matter? Well, first of all, it is a fantastic method of ensuring no two games are ever really the same. But in terms of financial value, it means that the chances of you getting, say, that mythic Oracle of Moldiah is somewhat different than if it were a regular mythic in a regular draft booster. Now, there's some other factors of randomization and distribution that I'm not going to get into here. I instead just want to paint a slightly broad stroke to get a general sense of our chances of pulling, say, that oracle. Let's assume the card we want is in one of those 121 configurations, the mythic theme pack, as it were. And your odds of opening any one pack are, of course, one out of 121. Since there are 24 jumpstart booster packs per box, if that box has no duplicate packs, then we're looking at 24 out of 121 odds, or roughly a one in five chance. It's also worth noting that some pack configurations have multiple rares. Again, speaking roughly here, but approximately one in every three Jumpstart packs will have more than one rare. So keep all that in mind when we look at the rares and mythics of value in this set. Financial value, part two. Oh snap, there's some real spice here. Jumpstart contains no foil cards. Sorry, Pringles lovers. But it does contain a combination of needed reprints and original brand new cards that many Magic the Gathering players are chasing after. As of the filming of this video, there are currently 46 rares and mythics out of a total of 104 worth $4 or more, with many more in the $2 to $4 range, as well as several basic lands with rare artwork that is valued within this range, meaning that there's a high volume of value here. Allosaurus Shepherd is a $64.58 card. And again, that's for a non-foil mythic. There's no foils here, so that's just, that's, there you go. Tiny Bones, $52.73. Bruvac, $39.65. While these are mythic commanders that may come down in price as more product gets opened, reprints such as the $36 
$5 Crater Hoof Behemoth, or now $25 Oracle of Moldiah, Exquisite Blood, and Shieldred Whispering One are likely to stay fairly high due to their high commander demand. The list goes on and on. Another much needed reprint of Ristic Study, still a $20 card, as well as Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, and Linvala, Keeper of Silence. And even below the $2 level, there's tons of low end financial value cards that do see play in multiple formats, even commons and uncommons that see play. So even if you're not striking it rich, you're walking away from the game with cards that can find a home and a use, whether it is in your commander deck, your popper deck, or your trade folder. Best of all, Jumpstart is only $100 per booster box or $4 per pack. Or it would have been had there not been a critical shortage of supply due to COVID. At first, I was thrilled to see pre-orders on Jumpstart booster boxes selling for about $100 each, which though Wizards of the Coast does not publicly announce an MSRP anymore, indicates that the intent for this product was likely for it to be priced at or near the cost of regular draft sets. In other words, $100 booster boxes or $4 packs, give or take. Sadly, Wizards of the Coast has announced that due to the current crisis, distribution was interrupted and the initial supply upon on release diminished. As a result, there isn't currently enough product to go around and prices are high, doubled in fact, from that original intent. Here is where I need to be clear about something. Wizards of the Coast has twice now confirmed clearly and in no uncertain language that this is an unlimited print run. That means, as even Mark Rosewater explains here, that they will continue to print it as long as people continue to buy it. And I feel very strongly that you should not pay these inflated prices. I repeat, do not pay these inflated prices for Jumpstart. They're going to keep printing this, and as supply increases, price will hopefully decrease. Remember that you need two booster packs to play, so four to five bucks each is great because you're dropping about 10 bucks per deck, but double that at 20 bucks or even higher per deck? Uh, we're not at the end of the video yet, but I'll give you some spoilers. At that price, it's not worth it, especially when, again, there is an unlimited reprint coming. Finally, possibly due to the pandemic, though most likely due to Wizards of the Coast's now reliably terrible quality control, players are reporting massive mess-ups in terms of printing quality. Some print errors are actually worth money as collectors favor certain types of screw-ups, but others are just disappointing and not of interest or value to anyone. Be warned, and after checking to see if your misprints are worth anything, be vocal with Wizards of the Coast about expecting replacements. For good goodness sakes, they're in the business of cardboard. It's what they make. It's their product. They should not be messing up this badly this often. After over a quarter of a century as a leader of their industry, they should not be capable of this level of incompetence. Final conclusion, Jumpstart is a product that hits every single mark. It's fun to play, accessible to new and returning players, but also complex and exciting for experienced ones. It allows you to shuffle up and play without needing anything other than two booster packs. Each game is different, thematically flavorful, and loaded with cards both new and reprinted that players want to play with and that have notable financial value. Best of all, a Jumpstart booster box is a complete replayable game. Save the booster packs after opening and you can assemble your own smash up system. Great of this product in isolation of distribution and quality assurance issues. It's a solid A. Do not pay inflated prices. More are coming. This is an unlimited print run. If you receive damaged and misprinted products that you are unhappy with, contact Wizards of the Coast and politely demand that an acceptable replacement be issued. Be polite, but be firm. You paid money for the product, yes? Well, then you deserve not to get a defective product in exchange for that hard-earned cash. Characters are connected. Like if I pick a commander, I will go on the Wikipedia and be like, okay, what is that character's history? How does it fit in with this whole storyline? Um, so that is fun for me. I think being part of a 
being part of a nerdy fandom is like enjoying and absorbing that that environment, that history. Because yeah. it really yeah. tells you sort of like, in terms of newer stories, where things should be going and like what has progressed and what has not progressed in terms of like who's writing these stories. And I think that I love when you can see narrative in cards. I like that art form as someone who's really into comics and manga. Like I think that that's so compelling and interesting and I think because magic is a game with story, with characters that tries to build these universes, it is so valuable to like look at all of it together. Especially when you get a card like Sisei's Descendant, which I have, and I'm just like, oh, I love having all those cards together to be like, look at this card having an actual legacy in the cards. Yeah. Like that to me is really fun and cool. I get really into that stuff.